Welcome to the Thunderbird Handcrafted. My name is Genevieve. I'm so excited for you to be here for our first sewing tutorial. I've been sewing for close to 20 years uh, and I am so excited to take this next step in my sewing of sharing it with all of you. I know that for many uh, years I've had followers reach out to me, customers who've purchased my handcrafted items ask for me to teach sewing uh, and this is a great outlet for me to be able to do that and I hope the projects that we choose whether you're a beginner sewist or someone who has been doing it for years like myself that you find this channel to be entertaining and helpful and supportive <clears throat> and also a really great sewing community where we can all just enjoy this craft together. As you're following along, if you want to skip ahead or you're looking for a specific area, you can go and um, click the little down arrow so they're able to see the details of this video. There's going to be timestamps there for each different section of the video so that you're able to jump, up, jump ahead if you'd like. Also, all of the products that I use, everything from fabrics to notions to tools to my machines, all of that will be um, able to click on a link to take you to where you need to go to find those items. And if not, if there's something you see that I forget to add a link for, please post a comment below and ask. I'm happy to share with you anything that I use. Uh, and please subscribe. Please subscribe so that you're here for the next video um, that we share for the next tutorial. Um, I'm really excited to share all different um, patterns and other sewists in our community uh, and designers and artists uh, because I really believe that that's how we continue to uh, support one another and make this community stronger. So I'm looking forward to sharing with you today and thanks so much for joining our channel. Today we're going to be doing the pattern from Bernita. It's a free pattern, free download for a floor pillow. Uh, I made this floor pillow for my daughter who was heading off to college last year. Um, I thought that it would be a great addition to her dorm decor, uh, but uh, also to just be a really useful item for her. Um, she's used it from everything from like if she's heading over to someone else's dorm room so that she doesn't have to sit on that kind of not very nice carpet. Um, also, she's used it at her desk chair because many dorms don't allow you to bring your own desk chair. They actually have a very hard wood desk chair and when you're sitting and studying it's kind of nice to have something soft on your bum. Uh, and then also she's used it to go out uh, into the front lawn, um, whether they're doing concerts or events on her college campus. Uh, and it's gone everywhere with her since. She's actually at, a, at an internship this summer. It's there with her now. Uh, it is definitely the one item that we got for her dorm room that has not come back to our house. So if you have a new to college student, I highly recommend making this floor pillow for them in whatever theme they are deciding that they want. This floor pillow is actually a custom order that I have for a client, um, for her son. Uh, it's This pillow is also great for little kids, uh, whether it's that it's a place for them to do reading time, uh, by the coffee tables at night for homework, uh, watching cartoons, playing games, whatever it might be, this floor pillow is really a great um, gift to give uh, your favorite kid in your life. And I also believe also your favorite yogi or um, just for meditation in the morning because that's what I use mine for. This fabric that we're using today is from Spoonflower. I'm a huge advocate of Spoonflower. I've used them for years. I love that they're taking artists uh, and printing the fabric on demand. It's very eco-friendly to do that that way. You can find all sorts of designs, everything from um, florals and stripes to space. Uh, and so I highly recommend using them. They have a lot of different types of fabrics available as well in those prints. And it's a really great place to find some very unique fabrics. So the regular Bernina pattern, that does not have some of the add-ons we're gonna be adding today. Um, the regular Bernina pattern is strictly just the pillow, the floor pillow. This is one stuffed um, and we are gonna be adding a few details. We're gonna be adding a handle it's great for wherever they need to carry it to, if they're taking it to yoga class, out on the front lawn on campus, 
or from their bedroom to the living room to watch cartoons. Uh, it is a great add-on um, to this, so we're gonna be adding a handle. We're also gonna be adding a zipper into the seam uh, along the side so that it's easier to fill and also easier to on-fill um, to clean. Also, if you don't wanna do any hand sewing, this is a great addition to add a zipper into the back seam. Um, the original pattern is like this, where they have you sew the center to create this kind of very floofed cushion look. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding an upholstery button um, to both sides so that it kind of just really finishes it off very nicely. So this is our project for today. Come along with me. Remember to hit subscribe uh, so that you're here for the next tutorials, uh, but share with me what pattern, what theme are you going to do in the comments, and then let's get to sewing. Okay, so before we get started, <clears throat> go over a little bit of the things that you'll need to make this pattern and to uh, create your own floor pillow, your floor cushion. So we need the pattern, um, which I'll tell you more about how I take care and get my patterns ready to use. You're going to need some tacky glue. Um, there's different types. This one is primarily the one that I like to use um, for kind of like the fabric. Um, there's also a three in one um, you can use as well, um, but I like to use that. Um, you're going to need some buttons, um, button covers, upholstery buttons. Um, so you could use, if you have a, a cam snap, um, you can use that, but this does come with its own um, little um, tool inside of it. I'll post a link to this um, from Amazon. So if you don't have a, a cam tool, um, you don't need to worry about it if you buy uh, one of these kits with the button covers. Um, we're gonna need some thread for your um, domestic machine because this is something you can do in your domestic machine. This variegated thread is gonna go really well with the one that I'm making. This is from Wonderground. Um, a, I don't even know how big this, this is. Um, it's about a six inch, uh, zipper. I got the, I'll have a link to those on, um, for Amazon as well. Your, um, clips or, or pins or anything like that. You're going to need your scissors and your rotary tool, and then also your fabric. And you're going to, um, I use fat quarters for this project. I um, need two of one um, fat quarter, two, two fat quarters of another print. Uh, so two, two prints, two prints, and then two more for around the center. So three different prints, six fat quarters. All right, two of each. All right, so we're gonna get to it and start cutting this out. To build our floor pillow, we're gonna be using the Bernita floor cushion template. I have a link for this uh, in the description. Uh, it's a free pattern that Bernita um, provides. I had found it on uh, Pinterest when I was looking for a large floor pillow template. Um, and so this was the one I found. It also was the one that required the least amount of quilting, which was nice. Uh, and um, we're gonna be using that today as well as um, some fat quarters. What I wanted to show you first was how I go about kind of sturdying my template, especially for this where you're really only, you only have one pattern piece, which is this petal. Um, it's one of your petal pieces. And because we're going to create a full pillow, um, you're gonna be cutting at this um, quite often with your rotary cutter. Uh, so what I do to kind of sturdify and kind of help me from not having to print this out more often, um, I would love to get it in an acrylic um, template. Maybe someday we'll, we'll have that. Um, but what I do to sturdy it up is I print it out, okay? And very easy, print it out, make sure you're one inch. There's usually a one inch um, printed to the side. Make sure that one inch is actually one inch that your printer is printing it out in the appropriate size and then piece the paper piece together. What I do then is I use the cutout areas. Um, if there is not an SVG that I can print it out on my Cricut, um, I use, I've had these for how long, these uh, transfer um, sheets, and I cut out 
some of that transfer and I tape it to the back so that it's just a little bit sturdier than just a piece of paper because um, I think once you start making these uh, what I call flillos, um, you'll want to make more of them. So it's good to have um, that to be sturdy. So we have this and then we also are going to be cutting out the um, wide rim around the, your, your pillow, your floor cushion. Um, and then you're also going to be, what I've added is a strap. So, but what you're going to do with your fat quarters is you're going to open your fat quarter up. And I usually don't iron these. I usually iron my pieces afterwards. Um, I, I literally just cut them out as I go. But what I do is I start over here along my salvaged edge, okay? And we're just gonna take our rotary tool and I'm gonna hold it down and I'm just gonna zip alongside it. This is going to be the sides. It's also going to be, because we don't need this anymore, it's going to be the handle that we use uh, and it's also going to be the button covers. All right. And so now um, you want to get your ruler, so your, your guide. All right. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of line this up on our cutting mat and we're going to cut, we're going to line it up so we can we can make this bottom straight. So our handle is also going to be from this fabric. So we're going to put our fabric back down, all right, and we're going to measure up four inches, okay, because we're doing the strap, all right, the handle, all right, and then we're going to do 14 inches down. So. Now, we're going to find our buttons. So these are um, upholstery buttons. Um, I just get these off of Amazon. I have the link in the description for you. You can also use, um, you can also get a die for your cam snap. Um, I don't have the die for it. Um, I didn't realize I had one until recently, um, but it comes with, and I might have it here. It comes with a hand one that you can just do it as like so. We're going to get two of the tops and two of the centers out of the bag. Okay. Our tacky glue. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our buttons and we kind of want to find are there is there something on your fabric that you want to kind of showcase on the top of that button. And what's nice about this fabric is, you know, like I have the moon here. I could just do a moon. I could do a little little rocket ship. Like this will cover it. A little spaceship will cover it. Um, so I really, I kind of like that the moon would fully cover it. So I think I'm going to do the moon. And then I think I'm going to do a little rocket ship. A little, little rocket ship. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my my moon and I'm just going to cut around a little square okay and then I kind of go back and I just 
I round it off because you don't need all that excess and you'll you'll see why. All right. All right. And then what you do is you put it over the little die here that comes with your upholstery buttons and kind of center it to where you want it. And then you're going to take that top and push it in there like so. See that? You want to really push it in. Now that you have this here, you can also take your scissors now and just kind of clip off what you don't need. Okay. And then we shove those down in there. Pretty good. Okay. Shove them down the sides. All right. Now we're going to take this. This is your, where you're going to sew your button. Okay. And what I do is because these can pop off, I take a little bit of tacky glue put it on the center there. And now I do think there's a tool in there to push down, but I use the top of my scissors and just kind of turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. And then when you pop this baby out, my fingers will work. You have A fabric button. Can we get it to, there we go. Isn't that cute? So there's our moon. So I usually just set them aside so that I know I have them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lay this out just to see how it looks, okay? So we don't need necessarily these, but I will flip, flip them this way. So sometimes I like to see like, you know, how is everything gonna jive together? So I'll just flip it like that. We don't need our pattern anymore, but here are our pieces. So I'm gonna just alternate kind of where they go. Let's take it over to um, the sewing machine and let's get these pieces put together. So before I came over to the machine, after we cut these out, I organized my petals into the proper order that I want them, okay? So that way I'm able to better piece it together. I know that it's gonna look exactly the way I want it to look when I go and, and put the two sides together for the floor pillow. So I'm gonna start with my, my first two. Okay, I have my machine threaded, not with my fancy thread, but just very basic um, thread you can buy at Joann's. Um, I have a black on the top and a white on the bottom, just so that you're able to see. Uh, and I'm gonna just take those top two, set these other ones to the side. I'm gonna fold right sides together on these. Very simple. You don't probably don't even need a needle or clip or anything like that. Okay. And we're just gonna straight stitch right down uh, at the quarter, quarter inch. And then we're going to just finger press that seam down for now, okay? And then from there, we're going to take the next one in our set, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing to go all the way down, all right? All right, so now we have our one half, all right? So if you can see, we have our one half here. So we're, we're gonna just set this to the side for now and work on the opposite half. But what you wanna make sure, and this is one of the reasons uh, to just have it in the order you want beforehand, what we wanna be mindful of is whatever 
petal uh, fabric you started with down here, whatever um, pattern you have for your fabric here, is the same one you wanna start with on the next half, okay? Because that way when we flip it right sides together, they'll be in the right order, okay? So we're gonna work on the next half of that side of the pillow. So we're gonna put the one that we have on the very bottom down and then our next one up, okay? So we have both of our, our halves here, okay? Both of our halves, all right? And now when we put them right sides together, you'll see that I have one, one fabric here and one fabric here, one pattern, okay? One of, e one of each different one, that's what we wanna see. So remember, you always wanna start with the same pattern fabric as the, as the one that's facing you and then inter, interchanging that till you have four of them together and then start the next one, four of them together. And then when you piece them together, they'll, they'll be the opposite ones. Now what we're going to do is, remember I was saying them to put all your seams that they're, they're facing you, right? They're coming towards you. So all my seams on this top one are that direction. All my seams on this bottom one are now the other direction, okay? Because that's how I can tell where my center is. I don't know if you can see that, all right? So I'm going to butt those centers together, okay? Make sure that that's meeting up and that both the seams are kind of going in the opposite directions, all right? And that's where I'm gonna put my first clip. Have my clip backwards. Okay, and then from there, I'm gonna just put one or two more clips to piece these together. And now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a quarter inch and we're just gonna go straight down the center, okay? We're gonna back stitch a little bit here and back stitch at the end because we don't want it to come apart. All right. It's our first one. Sometimes what I do is I come in here and I clip this down because you're gonna wanna be able to get your, your needle through there when we go to sew our upholstery button on. So I'll usually like just clip that off a little bit. All right, but there, we have our first pinwheel flower, whatever you wanna call it, okay? So now we're gonna do the next one. Okay, now that we have both of our flowers, pinwheels, whatever we wanna call them sewn, we have all those seams done, we're gonna bring it over to our iron and we're gonna iron this out so that it's nice and crisp um, and flat. So we'll start with our first one. And I usually move it to the opposite side first because I want to get that center seam looking the best I can. Because again, remember, we're going to be pushing um, and hand sewing our upholstery button through here. Um, so we want to try to get that seam as crisp as possible. And then once I have that center seam pressed, I'll move it to this side, okay, so that I can then really press this out nice. So I'm going to do that with both of these. Isn't that pretty? It looks like a nebula which I'm sure some of that is. My daughter's the, like I said, she knows all the terms. All right, so I'm gonna press the other one just like that. Okay, so now we're going to add the quilt batting to the back so we can quilt it. All right, and so you need your cutting mat and your rotary um, cutter. And you're also going to need a yard and a half of, I use from Joann's, this is bamboo cotton um, 
quilt uh, batting. And so you can buy it by the yard. I buy it by a big roll. <laughs> and it's doubled up here, all right? You know, like you would, would get it. And I just lay out my pinwheel, all right? I lay out one of the pinwheels. And then what I do, I wanna make sure that I'm fully on here. So when I'm cutting, is I'm just gonna cut, I'm gonna follow, I'm gonna allow my, my pinwheel to be my pattern. And I'm trying not to get in the screen, but you can see me <laughs> um, so that you could see what I'm doing here. But hopefully, hopefully you're getting the gist of what I'm doing. If you could quilt this a lot more than what I'm gonna show you how to quilt it, that's actually the instructions from the pattern um, are that you're quilting it a little bit more than what I am. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna clip both pinwheels to each piece, okay? And then we're gonna take it over and we're gonna just quilt triangles right down the center, okay? All right, we're going to clip this, just one clip at each of your petals. So we have these clipped and we're gonna set them to the side because we also need to do our panel pieces. Okay, so to do our panel pieces, um, I'm doing this before I sew the two and two together, okay? So I'm going to, it's still doubled up our quilt um, cotton, okay, our, our batting. And I'm just going to lay my, my fabric as my pattern piece to cut this out. So there's that one. So I'm gonna put my two pieces of panels with my two pieces of batting, just so I have that to be able to sew. And now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna cut out a second one of those. We need a piece for our handle. So what I do for the handle is I'm gonna line it up here on my line, just one piece, because I only need one, I don't need several, all right? And I'm going to take this piece, and I'm just gonna go up, I don't know if you can see here, two inches, because remember, this is four inches, so I just want two inches, so I'm just gonna line that up two inches, and then, use that as my pattern piece. Before we go back over to the machine to stitch is I need to iron this piece so that it's nice looking. Get those crinkles out. Okay. And then we're gonna lay it flat, opposite side down. We're going to put our fluffy side of our batting up, you know, on top of that. So we have the flat side of the batting facing us. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in half. And I, I usually just finger press it, you know, up against there. Same way with this side. I start over here and fold this one in together. And then we're going to fold those together and we're going to clip that, okay? Because we're going to stitch a quarter inch little top stitch on top of there with our nice thread to make this look nice for the handle. Piece, our two pieces of batting together here, fluffy sides facing each other, our two, and our, our two pieces, well, it's two and two, right? And then these facing each other, we need to do that. And then um, iron every, iron our fabric, iron our seam, and then we're going to just, I use pins for this, which I'll show you, um, so that's down the center, so I know where my center line is, and then we're going to quilt in V's our tops of our petals, so let's go and do that. We're going to put our panels together. Okay, so again, you wanna make sure that your right sides are together with just the quilt cotton, 
all right? And then we're gonna do the batting as well. So first things first, we're gonna do a quarter inch seam of our quilt cotton. Now I'm going to also do the batting. And remember, I want the fluffy, fluffy side up. So you'll feel which side is that. So that's the one fluffy side. Here's the other fluffy side. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm going to do a quarter inch, just right down. So I'm gonna show you now with both pieces that you do this to, how I pin this so I have a center line of where I'm gonna quilt. Okay, so now we are going to press our panels and pin them so we can quilt all of our pillow togethers. We're gonna take our batting, remember fluffy side up is what we want. All right, and we're gonna take our panels. I'm gonna try to match, match those seams, okay? And I am going to line this up on my mat to find the center of it. And that's where I'm gonna put, and I want pins that aren't bent, um, I'm gonna put some straight pins just like that, okay? I'm just gonna follow that, that pin down a little bit, just trying to get it at the center. And now we're gonna do the same here. We're going to get our center seam first. Now we can go quilt everything. Okay, now that we have all of our pieces ready to quilt, we're gonna start with our, our handle first. And remember, we, we said we were gonna do a quarter inch uh, top stitch. This is where it'd be nice to have um, some fancy, fancy threads, but black will do here. You could use any color you really want. If you can, there are variegated threads you can get like this. I just don't have any for this machine. Um, and a standard white and black is technically, you know, usually what I use because it goes with pretty much everything. So we have our handle and we're just gonna set that to the side. Okay, here's my center line. So I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna follow with my foot. I'm gonna follow the line of my um, crease of your seam. So we're just gonna follow that. We're just gonna make just a very basic stitch. When my foot gets to the edge of the triangle, that's where I'm gonna turn it. So I want my needle to be down. I'm gonna lift my pressure foot up. And now I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Follow this line until I get to the end. Okay, I'm gonna just lift it up again because I don't, I'm just turning to come down the other direction. And I'm gonna do the same thing all the way around for both of my pinwheel pieces. Okay, and for the panel, we're gonna find our needles. We're gonna have them facing away from us. That's the center. I know that for my machine, that this is center for me. If I have three fingers on either side of my, my um, panel here, I'm good to go. So I use that as my guide. 
came running around. And now we're going, I'm gonna use this plate because I know that the edge of this plate is where I want my stitching to be. You could stitch this, quilt it however you want. If your machine does way more quilting, fancy stitches, whatever, you could quilt it however you want. You could make the diamond pattern, whatever you wanna do here, you could. I personally, my machine, she does not do a whole bunch of fancy stuff anymore. Although one day, she, in one world she did, you know, way back in the in the 60s and 70s. But she really, she really doesn't like doing much more than a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. So I'm just gonna do another straight stitch. It's about an inch and a half away from the edge. And I'm gonna use my finger here to just kind of follow the edge of the plate here on the machine. All right, now we're gonna do the opposite end. Kind of get all my threads out of the way. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna find the edge here. It's about an inch and a half from the edge of my fabric. Make sure everything's straight. Use my finger here by my plate to guide me. So now I have both my panels. I'm going to get my second panel. I wanna find the correct direction here. Um, and then I'm going to meet these thread areas. I'm gonna match them, okay? So I wanna match them and my fabric, make sure everything looks like it's matched up as best as I can. Okay, I'll probably add a clip or two just to keep it there for me. Okay, and now we're going to do, a, we're gonna um, put a seam here so that these, in our case, in my case, with the fat quarters, four panels are now one. Okay, so we're gonna do I'm gonna see, I have some white here on the edge, so I'm gonna do a little bit more, probably a half of an inch, just to make sure I have everything in there. So I have that edge done, I'm gonna clip it, and then I like to take my, my scissors and just clip it up to make it nice. Get rid of any of my random threads that are hanging out there. And there you can see that it's pieced together. Don't worry if you have a little bit more above here, a little bit more, you know, like that's okay. I just try to make sure that my my stitching matches. I do it this way for a reason because I like to kind of know where, where this part is, that there is an actual um, seam like this uh, for me to use when we're putting the pill together. But you could, if you wanted to put all four of your of your panel pieces together, press, then pin them to your batting, then sew all four of them and you wouldn't have to worry about that. But I just find it easier um, to do it this way. Okay, so now we're going to piece everything together. So we have our, our pre-made zipper that we're gonna use. And what's great about this zipper the regular Bernina pattern does not have a zipper in it. It tells you to hand stitch it. If you're like me and don't want to hand stitch anything, this is the best way to do it. Don't be intimidated by the zipper. It's easy, it's not that difficult to do. Um, we have our handle that we're gonna put on here as well, which is, not, is also not part of the pattern. What I love about having the zipper is that you can fill it with whatever you want. I've had people fill it with the regular polyfill. I've had people fill it with bean bag beans. I've even had people take a whole bunch of old t-shirts, cut them into pieces and stuff it with that. So what's nice about the zipper is one, you don't have to um, do the hand sewing of a pillow. You also don't have to um, worry about whatever you're gonna fill it with. It can be filled with whatever. Um, and also, uh, you can pull some of that fill out if you need to throw it into the laundry. Uh, and then the handle is just great because if you have a kiddo, 
um, like my daughter who's a college student who might be carrying it to someone else's dorm room or even a little, um, whether you're a teacher that you have a reading area or it's for your toddler to take into their um, little reading corner or a timeout or uh, it's for sitting watching movies or playing games. Um, it's perfect to have a handle because it's easier to carry. So we're gonna take the handle and the top a stitch, the one that looks nice, not our bobbin stitch, you know, cause I had that little mistake there. We're actually going to take it and put the seams together. Okay, so it looks like this to piece it like that, all right? Because this is our back. What we're working on right now is our back and we want the nice part to be seen in the front, okay? So we're going to do that first and I'm going to clip, use some clips to clip this into place right along our center seam, okay? And I'll probably put it in another one just to hold that center in place, okay? Just like so, all right? And then we're gonna take our zipper and I'm gonna see wherever, wherever does it end, you know, like, so my zipper ends like right here. So I'm gonna place a clip there and I'm just gonna turn it. You don't have to really clip. If you wanted to clip so that this turns nice, you could, you don't have to. It's not that hard of a turn. And I'm just gonna clip it all the way down through the very end here, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to the machine. We're gonna stitch our zipper with our zipper foot, but we're also gonna come over across the very edge. We don't wanna come down. We just wanna make a nice little basting stitch that comes right across our handle because as we're putting it together, we want our handle to be really sturdy. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stitch our zipper like we would stitch the zipper and you can watch how I do that with our zipper foot, come across and just do us a really tight basting stitch, back stitch over here a little bit so that the handle is down flat and that our zipper is started. Okay, so I have my zipper foot on and I open my zipper just a little bit just so that I can get down past and I'm nice and close. So I'm gonna start sewing, do a little back stitch, come down through, remember just a very, very close to the edge basting stitch over our handle. Okay, we're gonna go back over and now we're gonna add our panels to our zipper. Okay, so you can see right now our zipper's on there. Now, the first thing we're going to do, now that we got our zipper on, we have our handle on, is we're gonna take our panel, okay? And if this had a specific direction, um, I would want to make sure that when I'm looking at it, the direction would be correct, okay? So, because I'm gonna be stitching it like this all the way around, okay? And this is the bottom. So I would want the pattern of my fabric to be facing me, all right? But since this doesn't have a direction, it doesn't really matter which way I go. And this is another reason I like the center seam for me to be able to see the fabric through because it allows me to really kind of line up the seam here with the seam of my pinwheel, all right? So right in between there, that's where that's gonna go, all right? I'm gonna put a few clips and I'm just gonna follow the edge of my petal, all right? I'm gonna put a couple clips for now here just to hold it not gonna go all the way around okay and then I'm gonna do the same here on this first one just kind of getting it over my handle all right put another clip there and then what I'm gonna do after I have that part done I am going to flip everything around like this okay so I have the back of my pinwheel and I can see my panel because I want to see where my zipper is going to be. 
okay so I can clip there all right so I'm gonna clip my zipper right along okay the edge like that and I'll probably take this one off for now because I want to be able to get my um, needle down in here a little bit but then when we come back we'll add that one back on but just so that I could have it lined up where I wanted I wanted to have that clip for that time so now we're going to take it back we're just going to take our again our zipper foot go right along the length of this back stitching at either side okay so we are back at the machine we are going to back stitch a little bit go down our zipper okay until we get down here and back stitch again all right so a little bit off my zipper until i get it started make sure everything is flat that i'm not getting any extra fabric underneath here take my first clip off we're going to press go back and forth a little bit all right so now we're going to go back over and we're going to piece everything around so that everything is connected. You can come back here and we want to look for this little metal piece or plastic piece of your zipper so that we can clip here and then I'm going to feel where it is with my finger and I'm going to clip the edge of this clip right next to it okay because that's the edge I want to feel get rid of some threads all right so now since we have that I'm also going to open my zipper a little bit I'm gonna put the two metal pieces together there all right I'm gonna take my clip I'm gonna put a clip right next to that metal piece. And then again, at the end of where I have it. All right, and so now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take this all the way around, kind of having it, when we get down to any of our seams of our petals, I'm just gonna make a little, little tiny fold there so that it goes up around okay but I just want to piece the fabric together because as you can see my quilt cotton is a little bit my my batting my quilt batting is a little bit bigger in some areas but I'm just gonna go around and clip because I want to be able to see the reason that I am clipping on this side is I want to be able to see this line when I'm sewing. So that's why my clips are facing me on this direction, not the pedal direction. Okay. Okay. So now we're here at the center. I don't need to have a fold there. Okay. We're here at the center. So I've just done this side of my panel and now I'm going to flip it around and do the other side clipping it facing me. So you can see here, like so, I wanna line those up. Okay, I'm gonna line those up. All right, and then I'm going to place one there. And one there like that. And with this, I'm going to sew a center seam, making sure everything is out of the way there. Part is gonna get clipped off. I no longer need this. And then I'm gonna open this back up because see here, now I have another seam that I can flatten 
right along that seam. Like so. And then put a clip. Okay, so I'll show you this whole thing right side. Okay, so now we have this all clipped all the way around. And we're gonna go and sew, we're gonna go sew, I would say a half inch in. But we wanna start, remember where I said to put these clips right next to the edges of the zipper? I wanna come down, I'm gonna probably just move it slightly over because I know that I'm gonna come down right next to it. And I'm gonna come down a little bit further. I'm gonna come down, I'm maybe gonna leave just a quarter inch from that first line. But then I'm gonna go up to my half an inch and I'm gonna follow my petals. So I'm gonna be looking for where I have this underneath. So I'm gonna be following half an inch seam, come down like a rainbow, point, turn, go half an inch, point, turn, all the way around until I get to the other part of my zipper, right? Which is right here. I'm gonna move this a little bit over because I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down here, come up, but then come back down again so that I'm only about a quarter inch away from that line again, and then come up right alongside where my zipper starts. I'm gonna back stitch both places here. Okay, so we're going to start here. We're gonna feel where that zipper ends because I don't wanna break my needle, okay? But I'm gonna come as close as I can to where where the zipper ends there. I'm gonna get myself set up. Remember, I wanna do a little bit of back stitching there. Just take it slow. And we're gonna come down, so I'm about a quarter inch down, and then I'm gonna turn, okay? Remember, it's kind of like a, a rainbow effect that we wanna do to get those petals. But remember, this first part, I'm gonna also have my handle. So if you're using um, this old girl, she doesn't do thick stuff very well, so I just have to watch that none of my stitches are jumping. And I'm gonna come down in, and I'm gonna turn it again because I'm gonna be coming up around. And remember, I want maybe a half an inch um, seam allowance. So real slow over the edge of my, there we are. So I can take off those. I'm gonna look and see. Yeah, I had some stitches jumping there. So I'm gonna to have to go back and go over that myself. But if you have a machine that can handle a little bit thicker, um, I probably could do this on my industrial, on my sale right, but I can just go back over it again. So we're just gonna do it about a half an inch in seam. Just double check and making sure it's going, going through good, okay. And like I said, we're doing a half an inch until we come down to, this is on the back side, okay? So these are our petals and we're gonna come down to a point So here, here's where if you have a tag or something, you know, like a label that you want to put on it, um, I have these that are just some canvas tags um, that I got made on Spoonflower with our logo. So this is where <clears throat> if you want to put a logo on, this is when you're going to want to do it. So remember, the side that we've already attached, this is the back this is the bottom so your tag you want to be able to see it you could have if you have like little tags that go in the seams of something you could have put them in here i always put my tag right here um and i do a little zigzag stitch for my tag so i'm gonna change my stitch the only other stitch she does <laughs> And I'm gonna put my tag on here.
Now what we're going to do is first things first, we want to make sure our zipper, that everything looks good. It looks like it's, see, this is why you want to get kind of close to where that edge is, um, those two metal pieces. And my other metal piece is, is in there, is deep in there. So when I zip this shut, my, my zipper's kind of snug in there, okay? But I want to open my zipper all the way. Because if I don't open my zipper, I won't be able to turn it inside, right side out, okay? So now what we're going to do is just like we did with this piece, attaching it, clipping it, we're going to go get our top piece and we're going to clip all the way around and we're going to sew all of that around with the half inch um, seam as well, okay? Okay, so we got our other pinwheel uh, pedals uh, clipped on here. You want to make sure that both of your seams, your main seams that you can see, that's another reason why I do this, that they're butted up to the actual correct ends, the top and the bottom of your pinwheel, um, and then start doing your pinning. That way everything looks straight once you, um, once you have it together. The other nice thing about this too is, um, you'll be able to uh, make sure that, you know, all your stitches are, are looking nice um, before, you, before you start. Okay, so let's get to sewing. Make sure that I'm not on zigzag stitch. All right. We got her. We got her. She was happy that time. Okay. So this is what I do with this part because this can be really bulky here. And we're going to be turning it forward. I thought maybe I cut myself there. All right. So I cut that bulk off of there. As you can see, it's pretty bulky there. I just cut that off. You could go around if you wanted to, um, around the whole edge. So what we'll do is we'll do that. So you could take your serger and, you know, if your serger takes a good thickness, um, you could go all the way around this to just solidify those stitches. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip this side as well, and then we're going to birth the pillow. Okay, so now we have our seams clipped. We're all ready to birth this baby. Now this does take some time, so just be very careful. You don't wanna rip out your zipper, all right? But we first wanna find the handle and pull that out, okay? And then what I like to do is I like to kind of roll this here so that it kind of gets like that, all right? And that helps me start pulling it through. So from there, then I just start kind of twisting and turning it and just be patient with it. Just take your time. It can be frustrating, but as you go, just keep Kind of pulling through, flattening, you know, like flatten this out and push it in. There we go. There we have it. So now you can um, get ready to do your buttons. You know, our two little buttons that we're going to hand sew. We're going to and sew those right in the center on both sides and we're going to sew them together so that this center piece of our of our pillow is is tucked all right so then as we're filling it this kind of stays tucked down in real nice like in a piece of upholstery um, so we're going to get our thread and we're going to do that okay so we're just going to take a needle a little hand needle our thread 
we're going to a generous amount, not too much that we're not getting knots like crazy. I'm gonna thread that. And knot it at the other end. Okay. All right, and so I'm gonna pick which one I want on the top. And, oh no, I like our little moon. I think I'm gonna put the moon on the top. And I'm gonna find my zipper hole. Okay, here's my zipper hole. I'm gonna go in with my needle on the inside. And I'm going to come up, try to come up through the center here. As close to the center as I can get. Sometimes it's a little difficult with that seam being in there, okay? Because that's the kind of the thickest part of that. Um, and then I have my little button area, and then I'm gonna go put my hand down in so I can just feel, just be careful. You need to use a thimble, use a thimble so that you're, you're not cutting yourself. Sometimes I just gotta push down to get my needle to go through there. All right, and now, same way we're going to be inside there and we're going to come up on the opposite side to put the other button because we want this to be centered flat okay all right so we have our button there and our button there and we're just keeping it real tight, as tight as I can. But I'm gonna go around my button probably about three times I try to do. You can kind of see where we're working there. We wanna just make sure that they're butted up against each other, okay? Okay, and then to tie it off, what I do is I make sure that were snug in there. And I just kind of go around my stitches. I try to get my, my needle around my stitches there, okay? That are in there in the center so that I can tie it off. That it's like right around my stitches. So it's holding it together almost, holding those stitches together. And it's okay if you get a little bit of the quilt batting. That's not gonna hurt anything. You just don't wanna go through to the other side. And you're just looping it around to tie it off, making sure that it's secure. And there we go, there's your, you can fill it with whatever you wanna fill it with. And there we go. There's our floor pillow. We call them fillows here at the Thunderbird Farm. This one I won't be filling. It will be shipping out to its new owner. I'll make sure that she shares over on the Facebook group um, when she has it filled so we can all see how nice it fluffs out. Um, but yeah, that's making a floor pillow from the Bernina Free Pattern. And we're done. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial on making the Bernita um, floor pillow. Uh, again, we call them fillows here at the Thunderbird Farm PA. I do have some uh, in stock that I've made already. If you're looking um, to maybe find a gift, if you're just not into making it yourself. Uh, one of the things that I really believe is that sewing can be the healing part. Um, and so I just really want to encourage you um, to get out there, start sewing, start healing. Uh, it truly has been for me. As a mom of a college student now, when I first sent her off to college, sewing helped me all that summer um, to just make sure that I felt like little parts of us, our family, um, were with her. Uh, and so I think if you have a college student who you're sending off to college, you're kind of going through those emotions uh, of sending them off into the world as adults, have you done all the things? Have you made sure they know all the things? I promise you, you'll get through it. I promise you that they are going to be okay. 
um, and also find something that allows you the sewing is the fun part, but it's also the healing part. Have a great day and get to sewing. You got this.